In mathematics, linear maps form an important class of simple functions which preserve the algebraic structure of linear spaces and are often used as approximations to more general functions. See linear approximation. If the spaces involved are also topological spaces, that is, topological vector spaces, then it makes sense to ask whether all linear maps are continuous. It turns out that for maps defined on infinite dimensional topological vector spaces e.g. infinite dimensional norm spaces the answer is generally no there exist discontinuous linear maps if the domain of definition is complete it is trickier such maps can be proven to exist but the proof relies on the axiom of choice and does not provide an explicit example topic a linear map from a finite dimensional space is always continuous. Let X and Y be two norm spaces and F a linear map from X to Y. If X is finite dimensional, choose a basis E1, E2, N in X which may be taken to be unit vectors. Then F X equals I equals 1 N X I F E I display style F X equals sum underscore I equals one carrot N X underscore I F E underscore I and so by the triangle inequality F X equals I equals one N X I F E I I equals one N X I F E I Display style F x equals left sum underscore I equals one carrot N x underscore I F E underscore I right LEQ sum underscore I equals one carrot N x underscore I F E underscore I letting M equals sub I F E I Display style m equals sub underscore i f e underscore i, and using the fact that i equals one n x i c x display style sum underscore i equals one caret n x underscore i l e q c x for some c greater than zero, which follows from the fact that any two norms on a finite dimensional space are equivalent, one finds f x i equals one n x i m c m x. Display style f x leq left sum underscore i equals one caret n x underscore i right m leq c m x. Thus, f is a bounded linear operator and so is continuous. If x is infinite dimensional, this proof will fail as there is no guarantee that the supremum m exists. If y is the zero space zero, the only map between x and y is the zero map, which is trivially continuous. In all other cases, when x is infinite dimensional and y is not the zero space, one can find a discontinuous map from x to y. A concrete example Examples of discontinuous linear maps are easy to construct in spaces that are not complete. On any Cauchy sequence of independent vectors which does not have a limit, a linear operator may grow without bound. In a sense, the linear operators are not continuous because the space has «holes». For example, consider the space X of real-valued smooth functions on the interval 0, 1 with the uniform norm, that is f equals sub x element of 0, 1 f x Display style f equals sub underscore x in zero one f x. The derivative at a point map given by t f equals f 
zero Display style T F equals F zero defined on X and with real values, is linear, but not continuous. Indeed, consider the sequence F N X equals sin N two X N Display style F underscore N X equals frac sin N carrot two X N for n1. This sequence converges uniformly to the constantly zero function, but t f n equals n2 cos n2 0 n equals n infinity Display style t f underscore n equals frac n caret two cos n caret two c d o t zero n equals n two inf t as n infinity instead of t f n t zero equals zero display style t f underscore n to t zero equals zero, which would hold for a continuous map. Note that t is real valued, and so is actually a linear functional on X an element of the algebraic dual space X asterisk. The linear map XX which assigns to each function its derivative is similarly discontinuous. Note that although the derivative operator is not continuous, it is closed. The fact that the domain is not complete here is important. Discontinuous operators on complete spaces require a little more work. Topic: A non-constructive example. An algebraic basis for the real numbers as a vector space over the rationals is known as a Hamel basis. Note that some authors use this term in a broader sense to mean an algebraic basis of any vector space. Note that any two non-commensurable numbers, say one and pi, are linearly independent. One may find a Hamel basis containing them and define a map f from R to R so that f pi. Topic zero f acts as the identity on the rest of the Hamel basis and extend to all of R by linearity. Let R n n be any sequence of rationals which converges to pi. Then lim f R n pi, but f pi equals zero. By construction, f is linear over Q, not over R, but not continuous. Note that f is also not measurable. An additive real function is linear if and only if it is measurable. So for every such function there is a Vitali set. The construction of f relies on the axiom of choice. This example can be extended into a general theorem about the existence of discontinuous linear maps on any infinite dimensional norm space as long as the codomain is not trivial. Topic: <laughs> General existence theorem. Discontinuous linear maps can be proven to exist more generally even if the space is complete. Let X and Y be norm spaces over the field K where K R or K C. Assume that X is infinite dimensional and Y is not the zero space. We will find a discontinuous linear map f from x to k, which will imply the existence of a discontinuous linear map g from x to y given by the formula g x equals f x y zero, where y zero is an arbitrary non-zero vector in y. If x is infinite dimensional, to show the existence of a linear functional which is not continuous, then amounts to constructing f which is not bounded. For that, consider a sequence n n n one of linearly independent vectors in x to find t. E N equals N E N display style T E underscore N equals N E underscore N for each N equals one two. Complete this sequence of linearly independent vectors to a vector space basis of X and define T at the other vectors in the basis to be zero. T so defined will extend uniquely to a linear map on X, and since it is clearly not bounded, it is not continuous. 
Notice that by using the fact that any set of linearly independent vectors can be completed to a basis, we implicitly used the axiom of choice, which was not needed for the concrete example in the previous section but one. <laughs> Role of the axiom of choice As noted above, the axiom of choice AC is used in the general existence theorem of discontinuous linear maps. In fact, there are no constructive examples of discontinuous linear maps with complete domain for example, Banach spaces. In analysis as it is usually practiced by working mathematicians, the axiom of choice is always employed it is an axiom of ZFC set theory, thus, to the analyst, all infinite dimensional topological vector spaces admit discontinuous linear maps. On the other hand, in 1970 Robert M. Solovey exhibited a model of set theory in which every set of reals is measurable. This implies that there are no discontinuous linear real functions. Clearly AC does not hold in the model. Solovey's result shows that it is not necessary to assume that all infinite dimensional vector spaces admit discontinuous linear maps, and there are schools of analysis which adopt a more constructivist viewpoint. For example, H. G. Garner, in searching for so-called dream spaces", topological vector spaces on which every linear map into a norm space is continuous, was led to adopt ZF plus DC plus BP dependent choice is a weakened form and the bare property is a negation of strong AC as is axioms to prove the garner wright closed graph theorem which states, among other things, that any linear map from an F-space to a TVS is continuous Going to the extreme of constructivism, there is Caton's theorem, which states that every function is continuous this is to be understood in the terminology of constructivism, according to which only representable functions are considered to be functions. Such stances are held by only a small minority of working mathematicians. The upshot is that the existence of discontinuous linear maps depends on AC, it is consistent with set theory without AC that there are no discontinuous linear maps on complete spaces. In particular, no concrete construction such as the derivative can succeed in defining a discontinuous linear map everywhere on a complete space. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Closed operators. Many naturally occurring linear discontinuous operators are closed, a class of operators which share some of the features of continuous operators. It makes sense to ask which linear operators on a given space are closed. The closed graph theorem asserts that an everywhere defined closed operator on a complete domain is continuous, so to obtain a discontinuous closed operator, one must permit operators which are not defined everywhere. To be more concrete, let T be a map from X to Y display style y with domain dom t display style operator name dom t written t dom t x y display style t operator name dom t subset x to y we don't lose much if we replace x by the closure of dom t display style operator name dom t that is in studying operators that are not everywhere defined one may restrict one's attention to densely defined operators without loss of generality if the graph gamma t display style gamma t of t display style t is closed in x times y we call t closed otherwise consider its closure gamma t display style overline gamma t in x times y if gamma t display style overline gamma t is itself the graph of some operator t display style overline t t display style t is called closable and t display style overline t is called the closure of t display style t so the natural question to ask about linear operators that are not everywhere defined is whether they are closable the answer is not necessarily indeed every infinite dimensional norm space admits linear operators that are not closable 
As in the case of discontinuous operators considered above, the proof requires the axiom of choice and so is in general non-constructive, though again, if X is not complete, there are constructible examples. In fact, there is even an example of a linear operator whose graph has closure all of X times Y. Such an operator is not closable. Let X be the space of polynomial functions from 0, 1 to R and Y the space of polynomial functions from 2, 3 to R they are subspaces of C 0, 1 and C 2, 3 respectively, and so norm spaces. Define an operator T which takes the polynomial function X P X on 0, 1 to the same function on 2, 3. As a consequence of the stone weierstrass theorem, the graph of this operator is dense in x times y, so this provides a sort of maximally discontinuous linear map confer nowhere continuous function. Note that x is not complete here, as must be the case when there is such a constructible map. <laughs> <laughs> Impact for dual spaces The dual space of a topological vector space is the collection of continuous linear maps from the space into the underlying field. Thus the failure of some linear maps to be continuous for infinite dimensional norm spaces implies that for these spaces, one needs to distinguish the algebraic dual space from the continuous dual space which is then a proper subset. It illustrates the fact that an extra dose of caution is needed in doing analysis on infinite dimensional spaces as compared to finite dimensional ones. Topic beyond norm spaces The argument for the existence of discontinuous linear maps on norm spaces can be generalized to all metrizable topological vector spaces, especially to all Frechet spaces, but there exist infinite dimensional locally convex topological vector spaces such that every functional is continuous. On the other hand, the Hahn Banach theorem, which applies to all locally convex spaces, guarantees the existence of many continuous linear functionals, and so a large dual space. In fact, to every convex set, the Minkowski gauge associates a continuous linear functional. The upshot is that spaces with fewer convex sets have fewer functionals, and in the worst case scenario, a space may have no functionals at all other than the zero functional. This is the case for the LP -R -DX spaces with zero. Another such example is the space of real valued measurable functions on the unit interval with quasinorm given by f equals i, f x, 1 plus, f x, dx. Display style f equals int underscore i frac f x one plus f x dx. This non-locally convex space has a trivial dual space. One can consider even more general spaces. For example, the existence of a homomorphism between complete separable metric groups can also be shown non-constructively. Equals equals notes. <laughs>